Conditional statements usually come up in geometry in your math class. And um, obviously, I have a little example here. This is a conditional statement. And you're not going to probably see this in geometry because this has nothing to do with math. But I think the best way to explain it is first using just flat out English. And then I'll kind of show you an example, maybe how it would come up in a geometry class. But this is the whole conditional statement is typically an if then. Okay? If you wear a ball cap, then you are a baseball star. And that's actually the first point is that conditional statements are not always true. Obviously, just because you wear a ball cap does not mean that you're a star. But nonetheless, this is a conditional statement. Okay, so the point is you can do three things, okay? You can do three things to the conditional statement. You can find the converse, you can find the inverse, and then the last one, wildly popular, you can find the contrapositive, okay? All right, I'm going to try to get away without writing these. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull it off. But basically, here you have two pieces, part one and part two. If you wear a ball cap is part one, obviously, comma, then you wear a baseball star is part two. Now, it's hard to memorize. These are what you're going to do to this statement. It's kind of hard to memorize. The way I remember it is converse. If you wear converse shoes, then obviously you can do a flip because only outstanding athletes wear converse shoes. So the converse is the flip of this statement. So if I have, if you wear a ball cap, then you are a baseball player, taking the converse of that, you would just flat out flip them. You would write, if you are a baseball star, comma, then you wear a ball cap. So I'll try to like quickly, briefly write. I promised I wouldn't, but I'm going to give you some notes. So this would be, if you are a baseball star, star, comma, you wear a cap, right? So all you did was take the two statements and flip them, right? Converse, you wear converse shoes, you can do a flip. The inverse is what's called, you take the negation of the two statements, right? And so you don't flip them, you don't change the order, you just take the negation. And the negation is me just saying no. So like, you know, if you have like a teenage kid, actually you probably are a teenage kid, and you probably do negate everything your parents say. So your mom would be like, you know, you know, little Susie, today's a beautiful day. And you'd be like, today's not a beautiful day. Because teenagers basically negate everything their parents say and be like, you know, when I was your age, uh, I used to like school. No, you didn't. That's called negation. So the inverse of this statement is you don't flip the order, you just negate it. You say, if you don't wear a ball cap, comma, then you are not a baseball star. You negate both sides. So negate is changed to, if you don't, this is kind of crowded, wear the cap, you are not, right, a star. Okay, done. Now, the contrapositive is the most random one of the two. All it is is both. You flip it and negate it, okay? This should be pretty easy to identify, but it is a little bit, it's the weirdest of the two, especially since, like, the word contrapositive never comes up in your normal life. So the contrapositive of this statement would be, if you are not, I'm going to take start with the second one because I'm flipping the order. Start with the second one. If you are not a baseball star, comma, then you, are, then you do not wear a ball cap. So this is the flip and the gate, right? And that's it. That's the three things you do to a conditional statement. Now, obviously, you know, number seven in your geometry book is not going to be about ball caps and baseball stars. It might be something like this. It might say, so let me erase these examples. It might say something like, <coughs> and actually, this is not a might. I've seen this like a million times in my life. So you could have a question like this. It would say, if two angles are a linear pair, right, a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Okay. And by the way, that actually is true. They could say, is this conditional statement true? And you'd say, if two angles are a linear pair, right, which is basically a situation like this, then they are supplementary. So that's good. Now, if I took the converse, I can do three things to this statement. I could take the inverse, the converse, or the contrapositive. If I took the converse, remember, you wear converse shoes, you can do a flip, and I flip them. If two angles are supplementary, then they are a linear pair. That is not true. Here's two angles that are supplementary. Call this like 100, and call this like 80, okay? Those are definitely, that's pretty bad. Those are definitely supplementary, but they are not a linear pair. They're not even next to each other. So. Usually these problems come up where the, where the book will say or the teacher will say or someone will say, 
Is the contrapositive true? Is the inverse true? Is the converse true? But the first step in being able to answer that is to know the three, and now I think you get a pretty good grasp. And so that's the three things you can do to an if-then statement, to a conditional statement. Remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, try to pass it there, and have the credits transferred back to your high school.